Pam, hi Liana, how you doing? I'm good, Rob, how are you? Doing excellent today. Hi, Rob. Hi, hello. Another beautiful day in North Carolina. Oh, it's always a beautiful day in North Carolina. I agree. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do today is, this is my, our the MLS class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen on the MLS and pull up the MLS. And I'm just going to show you some tips and tricks and some of the benefits and stuff that you can use on the MLS. So if you can follow along on your computer, that'll probably make it a little bit easier for you. So the first, so we'll start here just in a few minutes, but I'm, I'm going to start right from, right from here, our home, the home page of matrix. So this is where we're going to start. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll start in about like three minutes. I just got to grab one thing off the printer. Hey Kelly, how you doing? Hey Rob, I'm good. How are you? Sorry, I had to change Where's my that, screen. Get yeah, that mute button. Unmute. <laughs> Trying to get the MLS pulled up here. Okay. Yeah, get your MLS pulled up. So I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna do my share screen, and I'm gonna start right there. I'm gonna start right here. Right on the front Got page it. of MLS. So if we can get there. That'll be good. I gotta move this. Hey, Rob, I've tried calling them a few times and I haven't gotten any email or anything for it. Gotcha. Um, my they login take, information for that. They take for something, they have, um, they're inundated with the paperwork because they don't have anybody at their office. They're, uh -huh. they're doing everything uh, um, online. So have you tried to call that the, the 940 number? I haven't tried the 940 one, but I can try that one today. But for today, I, I'm kind of familiar with MLS already, so I'll just follow along on your screen. Okay, good, 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 good. But yeah, they're just a, a phone call. I'm, Amber was in my office here yesterday or uh, earlier, just making sure they had everything. And they had everything since August 5th. So, I mean, I know they have it. You just, they're just, you just gotta kind of stay on them. Okay, I'll have Amber text me that nine, five, four number, whatever you just said. Yeah, it's, um, 
I'll look it. I'll look it up and I'll send that to you. Okay, thank you. We might even find it on this page here. Okay, so let's get started here. So we, this is our MLS class. So with the the reason why I wanted to do this class was because um, there's some like tips and some buttons over here that you kind of just have to get used to finding out where they are. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a whole bunch of um, a bunch of these top tabs over here. And I'll tell you kind of some other resources and stuff that you can do. I'll make sure we edit your MLS page so you so it shows everything's coming from you. Uh, we'll talk about um, how to do a search and when a search property comes up and some of the tips and tricks on finding um, information about the properties. And then we'll do talk about a save search that you can save for your buyer client and where they will send to the buyers um, and you can set that up. We'll talk about that, how often you want to get that set up and you can get copies of that too. So um, kind of a whole bunch of things with the MLS is the bet. The, again, like I, I've said before, you kind of just get better at it by um, playing around with it, learning where the buttons are to click and what you got to do. So first thing that I want to do is I want to start, we're going to start all the way over here. So working as your name. So I have a team, so we have a team name. But let's just click on that and let's go into settings. Okay, so this is where you're going to want to update here are my information. This is where you'll update all of your email, your phone number, your website, all that type of stuff that you want, like when anything goes out to the MLS. So you're clicking your name, you're going on settings, and this is where you want to, you want to edit all this information here. Make sure that I that's... ask yeah, so on mine on mine. It says office email and it has your email. Is that, does that need to be that way? No, you're going to want to change that. So that might've been okay. when we submitted everything. So, um, um, so if you need to submit there's button right here, submit change request right here. Okay. And I can, and I can, okay. Yep. You can edit. So if they have a different email, like I had to do, I used to have a Robert pet at home team email. So I had to update it to my, KW email when I was this broke when I took this position. So take your information, submit any changes there, but that's where that's where your information about your personal information right there. And that it'll go across here and it goes across over here. So you want to update all this other information. So this is your header information, like when the when a buyer gets an email. So you can I really haven't done too too much, but you can do different styles, different settings, making sure. So I, I haven't done this in a while, but that was when I had my pet at home team stuff up there. So you just want to make sure that it's all updated. You can put a logo on that and then just go through all this. So if you're doing a CMA on the cover sheet for on the MLS, you can upload your photo and logo office information there. Your email signature, this is the email like when you set up a buyer's side um, search and they get a portal. This is what you want to make sure you set up your email signature. In the portal profile, this is what the buyers get when they when they when you get their email. So you want to upload all your stuff. There's there I am. If you have a portal greeting when they come in, if you want to upload a video greeting, you could do that. And then uh, just more stuff and more places for your contact information. So work, make sure you have this set up, set this up with all your photos, logos, emails, and updated information right from the beginning. So then when any time that we're using stuff from the MLS that gets updated. All right. Any questions about that? Good to go. Okay, so next thing I want to click on is here. Here's our resources. So being a member of Canopy MLS, you have a lot of resources that are you're able to use that a lot of people don't know just because they don't click on this page. So when you look at this stuff over here, this is kind of some local tools um, and some here realtor tool realtor tools. So let's look at some of these here. Like what's Home Snap? Some information is like a, uh, the broker public portal for interface and an app. You can take a picture of like a house. If you have that app, you like take a picture of a house on the street 
and from your phone and in that app, it pops up, the, it'll show all the information about that property. It's kind of neat. I haven't, I haven't really used it, but it's something I would check that out. Inman Select, these are, that's in articles and real estate um, um, emails and stuff that come out weekly. A lot of good information about Inman Select. You have a free uh, membership with that. So when you click on Inman Select, you just click and register for that. It's a good way to get some good information about real estate. Um, let's see what else. Flood status. If you want, if you need to see a property, if it's in a flood, um, a, a flood zone where they need flood insurance. Rate plug. That's the the combination with the mortgage lending tool that you can use. Realtor.com because they're a member of the National Association of Realtors, you have um, a link with them. Your all your listings are on there, so you're all just all with Realtor.com. You want to make sure your membership profile is up to date with that. Realist Tax Research. We'll talk about that, but that's just another. Uh, um, that's through the the town the town tax assessor's record. Realtor Realtors Property Resource. I'll pull up that website here in a little bit, but that website it just give it's like the um, the public information for properties just and only realtors have access to that. Has anybody used RPR, Realtors Property Resource at all yet? No. no? Okay. So let me open that one here. You, you want to, you're going to definitely going to want to check this website out. So RPR, it's just R N A R R P R dot com, and only realtors can use this listing here, um, and it's really like a public records, tax assessors records, but again, only realtors can use it. So let's just say I put in put in an address. That's my home. So let's say you're going on a listing appointment. This is just some additional pool, additional way to get some more information. Oh, that's not. I don't live in Pennsylvania. So this will give you um, an, uh, an RVR, which is like an estimated value of what they think the house is worth. It doesn't mean that that is the value, but it certainly is a good indicator. Um, and then now this website will also show bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, owner's names, home facts, and um, property square footage, schools, legal description, and mortgage records as well too. So you need to make, so that's a good, this is a good website to see where it's all public information. Like all this, all this information is all public and I'll show you how to get it on the, on the public website is too, but RPR, NAR, RPR, Realtors, Property Research, you get a little bit more in-depth information about a property. So it's certainly a good place and a good indicator to go. What, what was the... Ooh, you, you froze up. Part, um, okay, go ahead. What was what? Um, back in <clears throat> the system links, uh, the resources, what yep. was the heading that you went to? It's just right up here on the top. Yeah, resources. and and I'm in there, but then over onto the left, which, where okay, did you find so that? I didn't see it. RPR, Realtors Property Resource. Up, uh, RPR, right here. So the website is NARRPR.com because it's from the National Association of Realtors, Realtor Property there. Resource. RPR, I found it. I got right you. Right here. Okay, Thank so you. That, that yeah. opens up a new page. You might have to register. You might need your nerds number or something, but you are a realtor member. You have access to this. Okay, um, just some other fun. You also have access to zip forms, showing time. If people have used, are using showing time, we'll get into that a little bit more. And then here's some other information for some other realtor links that we have. Um, they have, here's a cloud CMA. You want, this is something that's, so we have the CMA option in the MLS. 
but this cloud CMA is kind of just something that's a benefit that you have with through Canopy Real Estate. So you can try, you can use it for free. I have not used it because I know there's like, there's so many other resources that you can use on command and stuff. But if you want to use cloud CMA, that's free. It's available for you. More realtor.com, Zillow stuff, and then other links, um, just showing other real estate links. Here's a good link right here, school sites. Someone says, oh, tell me about all the schools in a certain area. Pull up this, pull up this system here. This shows all the school systems in every single, in all the different um, counties. So Charlotte Mech, Mooresville Graded School District, Iredell. So say you clicked on Mooresville Graded School District, I wanna know all the schools in Mooresville. Boom, here's the Mooresville Graded School District page. So you can do a lot of research for your buyer or you can send this information uh, you can do the research and pass it on or just share this website with your with your clients they they have a whole all the systems all the all the all of the counties so let's look at charlotte mecklenburg so that's that's a really good resource for buyers that are coming that are oops, did i freeze all right, am I back? You can hear me, okay. So use, using these websites to find out a bunch of school information. <laughs> Keep freezing. Okay, we're good. I'm just gonna close a couple of these. So we're good with the school systems. Okay, and then the, one of the last ones here is like a tax and GIS sites. So this again, if you want to get, let's get some more information about a property in Iredell County. And we want to know the GIS map. We'll have to accept this disclaimer. So this, the GIS map points in some information in more where you can, it just kind of pinpoints a little bit more. Let's do my house again. So it really points up, get some really good information, point it down. You can see all the property records. So there's my lot, someone's lot. They want to know how much frontage, back frontage and all that stuff. That's what this website does. I just want to see if it shows the deed too. Okay, so their tax and GIS information will get you this property's information. You can get their deed and all that type of stuff from that record, tax and GIS. All right, any questions right here on some of these resources? Okay. All right. Let's go, let's go to our homepage now. We'll start over here, starting from the beginning of our homepage. And let's do, let's do a residential search. So let's look for a property, let's look for a home, and I'll show you some information on what we can do on trying to find a home. 
So let's say we're going to do, um, we want to do a market analysis or we want to find some comps for, uh, for my house. Search residential and quick. So this is for single family homes. If you want to do lot and land or commercial or rental, or if you want to look up agents or offices, that's kind of how you search. So search residential quick. And this is going to take us to a search field where we can search for a specific property. I'm going to put my address in there because this is our subject property. So any property that I'm looking at, I want to put it in here as the subject property. And then when I see where it's at, let's see, let's see what properties are going to come in within a mile radius of my house right here. Just putting it in the map and I look at a map number right here. And this pulls up all the properties that you're going to be able to use. So if I was doing a market analysis for my home, I go into your search and your property and I put in the address right here. And then now after that, I want to click these statuses changes over here showing I would want to look at everything that's active, that's under contract, under contract and pending and properties that have closed and maybe even expired within a mile radius of my home. So that's 73 matches. Okay, so this is a, just a search area of subject property. Now, if we're doing a market analysis, I would want to get a little bit more in detail. And now what I would want to do when I'm doing a market analysis, I don't really want to be too detailed though, because some properties will, I'll eliminate some properties. So when I do a mile radius, I kind of want to just stick to properties that are in the subdivision. Now, if I'm not in a subdivision, then I would just, I would put in a little bit more detail with square footage, uh, similar square footage to try and get a, a closer to the property. But now here I just have my property and I want to look at all the properties in the subdivision. So let's, I don't, I don't want to put bedrooms and baths because that could eliminate. I want to know everything that's going on in my subdivision. And I use these buttons over here, criteria, map, and results, because this is what's coming off. This is the way the properties that are, act, uh, that are coming into the market. So in my development, there's two active, three under contract, and six that have closed within the past six months. Okay, so now let's do, now we're gonna pull up and let's just kind of do a, some information. So a property pulled up here. This is an active property and here's some stuff that I wanna point out and look at when I'm looking at these properties here. Obviously there's your list price over here. But see this where it says parcel ID and it has this number right here. This here is going to take you directly to the tax assessor's record, uh, which is going to give you the public information. So let me pull that up. Now, anytime I go on a listing appointment or I'm meeting with the seller, I always bring this form with me. This form shows who's the property's owner. All this kind of the same stuff that we looked at in RPR. Um, the RPR stuff is just for realtors. So I look at that as well. But when I go on the appointment, I print this one out. And this is direct. This is directly from the MLS. It's the realist report. It's all public information. Shows the owner's names, what the tax of value is, the square footage, lot size, bedrooms, baths, estimated value, mortgage history, and last time it was sold. So that's all good information to know. It's all public information. So if you remember when I, on my script, when I'm calling for sale by owner, or even when I'm dealing with any seller, I say, if I can net you what you need to make using my services, this is what we're going to do. So it's, of course, every time before I go to talk to a seller, I want to see what they have for their mortgage payoff. And it's all, and it's all um, public information. Okay. Other than things that are public information is foreclosure history. If they've been in foreclosure trouble or something's been recorded, it'll show up. Same with in the RPR website. It, show, it goes into a little bit more detail about foreclosure history. So certainly beneficial coming to knowing how much, if a 
potential seller is in a for possible foreclosure or knowing how much they owe so you can determine what they need to net. Now, does this call out if they have like a, a second mortgage or um, a line of credit? Is that called out in here? It should. It should. Okay. Yes. Yep. It should come show up over here is that absolutely. Um, so now I was saying about the foreclosure history now, like back in 2008, have you guys heard of had heard of the phrase of doing a, a, what a, a short sale is? So have you heard what a short, the definition of a short sale means that the property's value isn't high enough to cover what they owe on their mortgage. Okay. So back in 2008, I did a ton of short sales because I would call for sale by owner. And I would say, if I could net you what you're looking to make using our services, would that interest you? And they'd say yes, because guess what they wanted to net? Zero. If they could net zero because their house wasn't worth what they owed in their mortgage. So that was, I came across, of course, you had to submit a lot of documents. You had to submit bank statements and tax, tax, um, your tax filings for two years and hardship letters. But that's how I came across for short sales because they just wanted to get out of the property. You, we might be seeing that coming down the road now because if someone hasn't paid their mortgage, you know, that over for, for due to COVID or whatever, um, you don't pay. And then another month you don't pay, you have late fees and interest. And that's how it kind of just builds and builds and builds. And then they kind of get in trouble with the foreclosure. So that's just something that's very important to look at if there is any foreclosure history and it comes up as public information. So any listing that I have, I'm making sure I bring that, print that out, parcel ID. Um, so other information that I wanna see here is, let's look at the school information. Now this, one thing I wanna point out is right here at the bottom, it says this information is deemed reliable but not guaranteed. So. If I put in the wrong school district over here, I'm, I'm not doing my seller any, any favors because people may be searching for properties and they want to go to Rocky River, Rocky River Elementary. So this school information, you want to make sure that you put that in there and try and be as, as accurate as you can. Square footage, this number here, these numbers above grade and living area must match what you have as your drawing. So let's make sure if you're a listing agent, these numbers need to be backed up by your home measurement drawing. Let's talk about this area over here. This is where it's important where you're gonna find all the property disclosures. Underneath here, it says two attachments and it'll open up another window. And that's where you get your property disclosure and mineral oil and gas rights. So anytime you make an offer on a property, you need to submit the disclosures, right? Where's the information? Right here. All the disclosures should be as attachments. You want to schedule a showing. It's just all right here underneath the picture. Schedule the showing. If you click that, opens up another window scheduled right through showing time. And you follow the steps going right through here. Um, on the offer to purchase, there's some questions that, that ask, um, how long has the seller owned the property? And there's three options. Seller owned it for at least one year, seller owned it for less than a year, or seller doesn't own it yet. Where that answer is here in the MLS right here. Seller owned for at least one year. Now I've had somebody say, how could, seller, how could a property be sold if the seller doesn't own the property yet? Okay, well, how that would work would be this, the person that's selling the property has an agreement with the current owner at a, at a certain price. And then this person here is going to either go in and maybe do some improvements and try and find another buyer. So seller doesn't own the property yet. That's okay. Um, but what would happen on the day of the closing would be this, the original owner would sell the property to the guy selling the property. Now that deed would be transferred over. And then this guy selling the property would to the new buyer would transfer the deed that way. So you don't really see that too often. Um, it's for houses that may be trying to avoid foreclosure or houses that are in um, rough shape, but essentially it's, I mean, it's basically like you're subleasing. 
So you have an agreement with the owner for a certain price, and then that person has an agreement to probably do some upgrades or some painting or some other work so they can obtain a higher price. And then they, the original owner would get paid the money that is due from, you know, usually on a lower price of what was agreed upon prior to going to the market. So that was a little confusing. So give me some questions. Who has some questions on that? So I feel like I've seen a couple of, are there companies that do that, Rob, in the area that could potentially sign contracts, look for investors to then potentially sell the property? Are they marketing that through the MLS? So that would be possible. I mean, you don't really see it too much. Like, um, like some of the, the iBuyers or women, they're not going to do that. They're making offers and they're, they're you know, that, that's a straight sale. Um, it's, it's really, yeah, it would be like an Rob, investor. can you repeat that? You just broke up completely. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a little static. No, no problem. Sorry about that. Okay. So um, I was saying that, so yeah, it's it's not going to be done through like a ribbon or an eye program. It's going to be done through like an investor. Um, and it's usually by a, a seller that's in distress. Yeah. And they're not in foreclosure, but the house may not qualify for financing. Like the, maybe the heating system is outdated or their electric isn't up to snuff or they have a roof issue and they just can't afford to get it paid. Now it's more like where you see people sticking up those signs, like I buy houses or I buy ugly houses. Low, I mean, they're like wholesale buying super low, not necessarily. I mean, you don't really see it too much, but that's where that situation would be would come into play. Okay. All right. Let's talk just briefly about here's our HOA information. This subject to the HOA, this information is going to match up with the information on the um, property disclosures. Okay, so there's a couple of places where you get the information on the MLS and also on the property disclosures. property disclosures, and then there's your, there's the um, HOA information. So CSI 525 a year and what it covers just to match, make sure it matches up. Yep. CSI 525 a year. So just to confirm, that's where you can, you can look. It's on the property disclosures and it's also right here. Okay. Let's talk about here briefly with um, public remarks. Uh, public remarks. So this is what's going to be shared on all the websites with as Realtor.com, Trulia, Zillow. This information is for the public. You're not allowed to put your phone number there or your contact information there. Um, and you're not allowed to put lockbox code codes there. Um, I've seen, I get violations from that and they have to be fixed. So just make sure this is just public remarks, public information pertaining to the home. Any specific or special circumstances, put that in the agent remarks. So uh, if, if you, you know, I put in there, uh, agents must remove their shoes before entering. Um, this is where I put agent is related to the seller. Um, I've put in here, um, if there's a house and another parcel, like an additional parcel of land, um, you know, this, this lot includes this parcel and this parcel. Um, what else have I put in there? Would you put bonuses if like, say the agent's offering a bonus? Yep. Very good. Exactly. That's enough. That'd be another, another, okay. uh, another good thing that you could put. Yep. Seller is offering bonus that, and that would go in the agent remarks. Definitely. Yes. Um, let's see. I've sometimes I've had a listing where, um, it was like, a we put it in as just land and we also put it in a single family. So I would put in there, re um, please reference MLS number, da, 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 da. So I was sending people to both listings. Um, for vacant land, I also put in there, um, permission to walk the lot is okay. So just, just stuff that you want agents to know or something, something extra. <clears throat> okay, actually, 
Leanna, I'm glad you said something about the um, about uh, the bonus. So, um, and that's why we want you to include the MLS MLS sheets when you go into contract and put that in. So we've I've had a case before where in the MLS it said bonus to the buyer's agent was five thousand or something like that. Going through the whole deal and da 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 da, da the agents got into a fight and something happened where the and then the listing agent went back into the mls and removed that comment buyers ate about the about the um the bonus and they said we ain't paying for you it ain't in there da, 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 whatever it was so what i had to get involved and because we had the mla mls sheet printed where it did show that i sent that to the closing attorney and um that that basically justified and backed it up um, this listing agent didn't didn't get didn't pull that one over us, and that buyer's agent did get the buyer's agent um, bonus that was offered. So that's a good place to put it there. And if you're the buyer's agent receiving that, and that's in there, print that out so you have verification of that. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. That that was important, and that's why we wanted we need a copy of this because that covered us in that situation. We wouldn't have been. I'm not sure how we would have been able to prove it otherwise. But we had the MLS, MLS sheet showing that, so that did prove it. So agent remarks, instructions, and you can also, there's also another place where you can put in driving directions. DOM stands for days on the market. Obviously, you're going to want to look here what you're being offered for your buyer agency commission and the listing agent's information. So. That's just some information that you want to look at when you're looking at the at a specific individual MLS number or MLS sheet. So here's another one. The next one, if I'm just doing some more research on that, I'm just for my buyer, I'm, I'm updating or um, confirming the school information. I'm confirming the how much home living area I have. I'm confirming when the owners owned it. I'm, all, I'm looking at all the attachments. You can see property history, all the photos of the houses ever. Property history would show, um, where is it here? If it shows if it had any uh, price reductions or price changes or came on the market or came off the market. There it is, so the history. So any history that this listing had back in 05, an active under contract closed. So if you ever want to see the history on a property, you just pull up the property here, right here. So a lot of good information underneath here. Uh, here you go. Here's a button that takes you right to RPR. Links the prop the specific property lamplighter with what I have on RPR. So these buttons are here are really going to are kind of some shortcuts that are going to take you to some of the resources that are available. Okay. So any questions on kind of searching through any of these listings or any of these properties here? Okay. Now let's talk about, let's look at our results. So we have our results. So say someone said, hey, send me all the information and continually send me all the information for um, properties in Harris Village, right? Okay, so here's my criteria. Here's all the properties in Harris Village. Say someone says, send me all the properties. Let's take this out. Send me active properties. Now we're gonna say we're working for the buyer, okay? They want all active properties in Mooresville. Now, a lot of people search by, how do people search? They search by how much money the house costs or what's the total size of the property, right? So if you put only like four bedrooms, you might be, you might be eliminating some stuff because what if you have a property that has three bedrooms and a bonus? So when I'm doing searches, I try and do the least amount of criteria as possible because I, I can get specifics, like specifics would be if they need a garage. Or you now if someone says I need at least four bedrooms, I can put that in there, but I'd rather search by square footage. 
Because if I go to someone's house and they say, oh, this is, we're using this room as a den. You can call it a den. Guess what? Maybe the next family will use it as a bedroom or they'll use it as a playroom or they'll use it as an office. So you can call it whatever you want, but the biggest factor is going to be your total home living area. And then you can say, well, it has four bedrooms and a bonus or it has three bedrooms and whatever it is. So let's look at what we have. Looking for a 2,000 square foot house in Mooresville. Ooh, I need to clear this map. No map. All right, research, research it. Okay, I'm going to start over here. So let's do a search for a buyer. They're looking for all active properties in Mooresville. With 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. And let's say they're approved for houses up to 250. So I'm not going to put Say they want like a new a newer house. We and let's so any type of information that they want. Let's say they want an attached garage. Okay, so this is the criteria I use. Houses in Mooresville. 2,000 to 2,500 square feet, year built, 2,000 or newer, and it has an attached garage. If someone wanted, they wanted to live on Lake Norman, you could put in, you know, must be waterfront. If someone says, and whatever type of, I want to put in, I want to be in this school, put in that school. You can search by as much criteria as you want. But again, I try and keep it as wide as wide as possible. So now we come here, we look at our results. Okay, we have 19 results. 19 results for active properties, diff all different price ranges, but diff same square footage, okay? Now we're gonna send this to our buyer client. How do I set this up? So over here, I'm on the bottom. You see where it says save? Right here, I'm gonna click save. Save new auto email. Okay, now we gotta create a new client, right? If they're not in there, you want need to just put their name, first and last name and email address. So they wanna get listings directly from the MLS. I have some in here, let's put me in here. Okay. You can make your subject whatever, whatever you want. I'd say Mooresville Homes. You can put in whatever you want. You're going to get a welcome email. And look, see how I already did? Make sure you have your signature and everything all set up. This is the message that was in here already. You can change it if you want. Here's the criteria. So now here's your settings. Um, so settings, you would want you would want them to do that. So here's your schedule. So you can set it up where the emails are sent as soon as possible. A brand new listing comes in to the MLS, boom, it gets emailed to them. Or you could do, set it up where they get it at a specific time, in the morning or at night. Some people are saying, you know, I want to know as soon as possible. Some people say, I don't want to get 10 emails a day with 10 new properties. I just want one email a day, send it to me one a day. So set it up, depending on what their, look, what, what their criteria is. That's where you can you can edit that. 
Um, so then here's your welcome email and then just to edit it, a reoccurring email. So for the next one, this is what you can, up, you can update this if you want, but that's where the next emails are gonna come. First email, reoccurring email, that type of set, set it up. You're linking it to your contact, to your, to your client. Blind carbon copy, put that in there as well too. So anytime they get an email, you'll get an email. You know what, my dad, so my dad used to do this all the time. So he puts this in here and, you know, and it gets sent out. So the next morning he's looking at all the people that got an email. So an email came out for like, for Jane Smith. He, he called her up and be like, hey Jane, you know, it's been a couple of days, just making sure you're getting the emails. Hey, hey, I'm, you know, this, did, did you see that new listing that came up in Mooresville? It just got sent to you last night or something like that. It's just a conversation piece. Sometimes he would pretend like, because uh, when you look on it and click on it, you can click, this is my favorite and stuff like that. So when he do, when someone would do that, he'd call and be like, so, you know, any houses that you like to try and just to kind of provoke them. Or he'd do the other way, like, hey, I saw you clicked on Main Street. That's a great house. Let's go see it today or something like that. So it's just a good conversation piece because you know what they're looking at with well, the same time that they do. So Rob, I might be too far ahead, um, but that just triggered a question. How do we know what they click on or where do we find that information when we send it out? So it's like, um, I'm not sure if I have a portal that comes up here. Let me see if I have a portal. Well, let's save this. And then that's it. So all you do, once you save it, they'll start getting the emails the next day based yep. on the criteria you submitted. Yeah, it should, it should be. Yep, absolutely. So I created that auto email with all that. Um, and that's coming in. So let me see if I can find my email. See if I got a welcome email or something. I should believe I did. Um, I set it up on this email. I'm not sure. Oh, I had my pet at home team email in there. So it was my other one. Let's see. Well, nothing from them yet. I don't know when it's going to, oh, I don't know when I set up that, um, to send me that email. Okay, well, let's look at what I got. I'll see if I can go in there and edit it. Not bad. Okay, I don't have any recent searches. Because you can just mark them as your favorite. You just really mark them as your favorite. I haven't sent myself one in a long time. So when I get that one, I'll have to follow up with that answer on that one. So this is my save searches and stuff. Kind of getting away from it here, but so you got your save search. Now let me see. Let me just show you something here. So say you click on a page and you're like, oh, I forgot my search. I forgot what I was doing. See this recent searches button. This keeps track of all the searches that you actually did that you've had. Um, so like I know, I, just keep this in mind. If you did a, a search the other day. Or something like that, something want to come in here. These are the searches that we just did. This button here is important. So this is the buyer criteria one that we did. Recent searches. 
So Kelly, what I would do, set up, set yourself up as a client and send out so you see what the portal comes in at and when you get that so you can take a look at it. Yep. It'll be, let's see here, it's something like, these comps, see if they come to me. So this is what it looks like. Came from me, pet at home team. Click the following link to view the residential stuff. When you click this link, that's what it looks like. Uh, so let's say I clicked on this one. It shows you all the information, virtual tour, and notes for you and your agent. So that's what it looks like. And I guess if you hit these notes, it'll share back when you're reviewing. Okay. So if, I guess if they, I know that this email was sent over to you, it'll, I can go back into my contacts information and view the results. So this is what the client gets. It's pretty good information. I mean, it looks pretty cool. It looks really professional. Okay. All right, any questions on that part about setting up a safe search? Adding the clients, okay, so that's a, that's a good feature for you guys to learn and, do, and to use that one. If they want to potentially change a couple of the um, criteria that they're looking at, is there somewhere that we can then go back into that specific search, update it, and then they're getting, you know. Correct, yep. Yeah, we just have to pull back in that search and edit. Like if they want more square footage or if they say, well, put properties only up to 300,000 or whatever they want to do, or say, hey, I want to be in this subdivision. Yes, you can go back and just edit it. All right, let's look at some of these stuff here on the main page here on your My Canopy. And let's just talk about what these are, like this, um, the hot sheets and the stats. Um, the SAM module, this thing over here. So you want to talk about stats. You always want to know what's going on in the Charlotte region, knowing your stats. So this will give you some links and some tips on how to find out and how to read these reports. Check those out. You want to, I've always looked at these. Here's our market search, all the listings, everything that's been, that goes on here in the market um, within the past day. So, Six today, 16, 129 new listings. All right, let's look at a hot sheet for a residential. And you click that, what that pops up. So this is all of them. These are all the residential listings. And let me show you this button here. The, so this, the, the SAM, the statistical analysis module. This will give you some more types of research and more history. Uh, another, a little bit, again, important if you're going into the MLS um, or if you're going on a listing appointment, but this is in the entire MLS. So let's be more specific and let's add an area. Let's do Cornelius. Okay. 
Okay, so all, pro all single family properties in Cornelius, all price ranges, all types of sales, all bedrooms. That's just, this is gonna show what your average sale price is compared to, from Cornelius first the entire MLS. Um, you can really be as specific as you want, um, but this is just some more information if you wanna show what the specific town is compared to the entire MLS. And it goes back as far what the dates are and stuff. And you can get, so let me see, I'm in Cornelius, single family properties, two bedrooms or fewer. Roughly, you're probably gonna spend about 266 if we're looking for a two bedroom house in Cornelius. Let's look in Huntersville. Two ninety five for a two bedroom house on average in Huntersville. So it's the you know this is just going to give you some more information where you can look. Again, set up your profile. Make sure your your all your information is accurate. Just a place for you to go up and, and do more research, get more information on a specific property or a specific area. Statistical analysis module, the SAM module. Um, and some of those resources that we talked about on that top link page that was up here, kind of all jammed in here on this front page as well too. If you, just some fast links. Uh, we talked about the home snap. Let's look at and see what home snap is. It's that one where they take a picture of a, of a home. All right, let's see what my house is. So are you going on a listing appointment? Put in the subject property here. Look, it shows you all this, all the aerial photos, what they think it's worth, beds, baths, square footage, history, estimated value, schools information. There it is. So Home Snap is going to give you all the good school information as well. Commute time, similar listing. So all these websites and and um, resources is just a way for you to do more research to get more information on a specific property or be able to explain to your buyer some more information about what a subdivision has to offer or whatnot. Rob, I just downloaded the app. It's pretty cool. It actually does a, a quick CMA right on the yeah. phone too. So just like if you're, I don't know, in a conversation with somebody, maybe it could just help, yeah. um, you know, on the spot. Yeah, if you're at an open house or something like that, right? Wouldn't that be something cool to use to use and pull that out? Now, you can take a, can you try to pull it across the street later on and take a picture of your neighbor's house or something like that? I think it, it pulls up the information right from the, from the app. Okay, I'll try. Yeah, when I set it up, I just had it um, to source my location. So it kind of pulled up everything that was either for sale or just went off the market close to me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll try to take some photos. And see what yeah, see if you can do that. So you, again, with all these resources and tools, sometimes you forget that they're there because there's just so many places where you can get all that information. But, you know, use it as a resource to help you do more research and to spy and to gather some more information. You can really sound like a neighborhood expert when you're going into detail, looking at that, the SAM module and stuff like that, because you can, you, you just, you can find out exactly what properties are going to average on what bedroom square footage and location and stuff like that. So you can, good way to get prepared for an appointment to going on any type of appointment. All this stuff is all the information for the most part. You just have to click. click. Okay, that's really what I have for the last kind of the topics that I have. If you have anything you want me to talk about, or if I talk something about a little bit too fast, what, what's the kind of anything you want me to cover? Want to recover or anything like that? I think this is very helpful. Rob, thank you. Um, good. Okay, good. The one, and I, I, we might have already done it. I don't know if it's on the YouTube channel, but I think um, like we kind of started getting into it. But if we did a, a full one um, on 
pulling or creating a CMA in MLS. Maybe I missed that and it is on the YouTube channel. I think that would be the next um, step that'd be really helpful. Okay, doing like, so I did, I, I actually did one yesterday. Oh, where okay. We, it right, it's okay. And we just did a property and, um, but if you wanna do that, if you have a subject property, just come on in here or we can do a Zoom meeting and I'll, we'll do it one-on-one -on -one and I'll show you exactly what I do. Find out to determine the price, price per square foot, um, you know, give my price recommendations and I'll show you how to get the list price to sale price ratio and stuff like that. If you want to do that, I'll, I have no problems doing that. Or maybe, you know, the next PB meeting, I'll do that CMA um, and do a quick brief CMA for a property. We can do that. Awesome. Thank you. I'd, I'd like that too. So I don't know if, awesome. if we yeah. want to try to do something together or, but. Yeah, why don't you just come, it's easier if we just do it, just come in come here in, in the office. Okay. Yeah, set up, just email me the best time because then I'll just pull it on my computer. If you want to pick a subject property or I always just pick my house because it's simple. But if you say, hey, I got another house, pull that one in. I'll show you every step by step what I do to determine what a price range is and to pull some comps and you can use that information. Okay. I know I, pulled, I, I created some CMAs the other day um, for two different homes and somehow... I, I did it totally different for each of them. I don't, okay. I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't even remember how I pulled them, but then I tried to recreate it and I, and I like went around the back door. I don't know. <laughs> I'm on the same page. I've done a I couple, got it. but I've gone different ways. So yeah. Yeah, not for when you're going to go or what your schedule looks like, but if you want to shoot me over some days or times, maybe we can go in together. Okay. Only take up That'd an hour be nice. Hour. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll pick a property or whatever, and we'll do that, and we can we can crunch out the numbers here. That's that's good. And we'll, cool. We'll try and figure out one way to get to the to get to that end product. <laughs> yeah. Consistency. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's all I have for this class. If you have any other questions, let me know, and we'll we'll get together going forward. And hope you have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.